Okay, so today we will start the system of your body which is the most powerful, most complicated, most delicate and most interesting system of your body. That's the nervous system, right? Nervous system controls the physiological functions of your body. You know, it is one of the control systems, right? First acting control system. So, all physiological functions of your body is controlled by the nervous system, okay? Nervous system consists of a brain, a spinal cord, and nerves. One brain, one spinal cord, and many nerves throughout the body. First, we will see the functions of the nervous system. How the nervous system works. Then we'll talk about the division of the nervous system, how we divide the whole nervous system into different branches or divisions. Then we'll talk about the cells in the neural tissue. You have seen the neural tissue under the microscope, remember that? Neural tissue, nervous <coughs> tissue. So there are different types of cells, you will see the cells of the nervous system. One type of cells are called neuroglia or glial cells. Neuroglial cells are the supporting cells of your nervous system or neural tissue, supporting cells. We'll see uh, different types of neuroglia and their functions. Then we'll talk about the main cells of your nervous tissue and the main cells are called the neurons. So neurons are the main cells and neuroglial cells are the supporting cells. Make sense? So those are two types of cells. Then we'll talk about a few other things. We'll talk about traps, nuclei, gray matter, white matter. Those are the things we often see inside the nervous system. You will see many tracts, you will see many nuclei, you will see gray matter and white matter. So we will see what are those structures found in the nervous system. Then we will talk about the reflex. First, your nervous system performs thousands of functions. Just think that. You see the things with your nervous system, right? You listen with your nervous system. Although, uh, if I ask you, you see, uh, how do you see the things? You will see, I see with my eyes, right? But actually, you see by your brain. You listen by your brain, okay? So, <coughs> your eyes, your ears, just receive the signal from outside and sends to the brain sends the signal to the brain. Your brain actually gives you the perception, okay? So you see with your brain, you listen with your brain, you taste the food, right? With your brain, everything is processed in the brain. So, your nervous system performs thousands of functions, but we can group or bundle those functions into three types, okay? Sensory input, integration and model output. Okay, so we can divide those functions into three types or three groups. Now, let me give you a couple of examples. If I touch your skin, touch your body with something very <coughs> hot, right? That signal from the skin goes to your brain. Right? That is sensory input going towards the brain. Is it clear? In this case, the 
stimulus is hot, temperature, going to the brain. That is sensory. Then your brain will do what? In this case, your brain will interpret, make sense? Will analyze that signal. That what kind of signal is that? Anger. Right? Is it cold or hot? If it is hot, is it too hot or you know comfortably hot? Make sense? Should I move my hand away or not? All those things are done where? Inside the brain. Is it clear? So your brain quickly, you just think that how fast your brain interprets those things. Many things. What is that? Where did you get the touch? In your hand or your trunk or leg, right? Quickly. Is it hot or not? If it is hot, can it harm you or not, right? So you see so many things your brain are quickly interpreting, right? That is the integration. And after that, your brain sends signal, motor output to your muscle to move your hand away, if you decide, right? So, that's the <coughs> motor output going from the brain to your muscles. Is it clear? That is motor output. So, sensory input goes to the brain. Your brain integrates the signal, right? And sends motor command to perform what? Action. In this case, what is the action? Moving the head away. Make sense? So that is motor output. Let me give you another example. When you are thirsty, you look for water, right? Okay. So when you see a glass of water, that picture goes from the eye to the brain, right? So that is again sensory input going from the eye to the brain, right? And brain interprets that signal, right? In this case, your brain will do what? You all know. First thing your brain will think, is it water or not? It could be something else, right? Liquid something else. So your brain will first uh, will make sure it is water, right? It could be acid or something. If you go to the lab, right? And, uh, so uh, is it clean or not, right? If it is water, is it clean or not, right? How far the glass is, your brain has to also measure that, right? Because you have to grab it. You know, the shape of the glass, because you have to grab it, right? All those things are interpreted by the brain quickly, right? And then brain sends signal to the muscles of your head to grab the glass, right? Make sense? So that is motor output, going from the brain to the muscle, again, right? So motor output command to the muscle. So that's how your nervous system functions. You see here, from the eye to the brain, sensory input, integration, all those things are, you know, uh, analyzed by the brain, and then brain sends signal to the muscles to move the hand. Divisions of the nervous system. First, we divide the nervous system into two parts. The central nervous system or CNS and the peripheral nervous system or PNS. So, first divide. Central nervous system or CNS, peripheral nervous system or PNS. Central nervous system consists of two organs, brain and the spinal cord. Okay, so these two organs belong to the central nervous system. Peripheral nervous system consists of nerves. Okay? Nerves. Now, uh, if you see uh, the brain, this is your brain, this is the spinal cord, and these are the nerves. Okay? See from the spinal cord nerves arise. Also, there are 
12 pairs of nerves, those are attached to the brain. Okay? So, they are nerves, they are attached to the brain too. So, you see here, some nerves are attached to the brain and some nerves are attached to the spinal cord. So, those nerves are attached to the brain, those are called cranial nerves. Nerves and those are attached to the spinal cord, those are called the spinal nerve, spinal nerves, and cranial nerves. Okay. So peripheral nervous system consists of two types of nerves: cranial. Spinal. Cranial are attached to the brain. Spinal nerves are attached to the spinal cord. <coughs> Make sense? Okay. So we have total 12 pairs of cranial nerves. 12 pairs of cranial nerves. Spinal nerves, we have 31 pairs. So 12 pairs of cranial nerves and 31 pairs of spinal nerve in the nervous system. Okay? Now, uh, that is the anatomical classification of nerves, cranial nerves and spinal nerves. Functionally, we divide the nerves into two types. Some nerves, you see here, some of these cranial nerves, take the signal towards the brain. Now you tell me, taking signal towards the brain, sensory or motor? Sensory. Sensory, remember? Sensory signal. So, these are called sensory. Sensory nerves, taking the signal towards the brain. And then brain does what? Right, interprets, integrates, right, the signal, and sends motor command, right? You remember I said that? Motor commands. So, the nerves that take the signal out, those are sensory or motor? No. Motor, makes sense, right? Motor commands. So, motor. So, functionally, we divide the nerves into sensory and motor. Sensory nerves take the signal towards the brain. Motor nerves take the signal out from the brain. Is it clear? But okay. can I ask a question? Yeah. So certain cranial nerves are sensory nerves and certain spinal nerves Very are sensory nerves? Yes. Okay. There are certain sensory, spinal, cranial nerves are sensory, certain cranial nerves are motor. There are few cranial nerves those have both sensory and motor fibers in it. Okay, so mixed sensory and motor. Is it clear? Okay. So, uh, that is the functional division of the nerves. And this is the anatomical division of the nerves. We can say sensory nerves, motor. Spinal nerves, all these are mixed type nerves. Mixed type. Why spinal nerves are called mixed type nerves? Because inside the spinal nerve, you will see both sensory and motor fibers inside. Okay. So, the nerve has both sensory fibers as well as motor fibers. So, some fibers are taking signal towards the spinal cord, some are taking L, out. Okay. So, let's move forward. You see, sensory and motor, functional divisions. Sensory nerves are also called afferent, arriving, starts with A, going towards the brain. And motor are efferent, exit.
sitting, getting out, starts with E. So apparent means going towards the brain and efferent means going away from the brain, out from the brain. So that's why sensory are also called afferent nerve and motor are also called efferent. You can easily remember A arriving, E exiting, okay? So arrival and exit. Now, motor could be two types. Somatic and autonomic. signal that is getting out from the brain could be two types, somatic and autonomic. <coughs> autonomic means voluntary or involuntary, what do you think? Involuntary. involuntary. Autonomy. You are not doing it. Okay, make sense? Voluntary is you are controlling it, right? So, <coughs> you tell me when you get scared your heart rate goes up, right? Increases. You do it or it help, happens by itself? Do you increase your heart rate or it happens by itself? By itself. itself, right? You know that. You don't say your heart goes fast. You don't do that. Make sense? When you see delicious food, you're hungry, right? What happens? Saliva so secretion occurs, right? Is it? Voluntary or involuntary? Involuntary. involuntary? involuntary, right? Autonomy. So you see, when you see something delicious, from your eye, signal goes to the brain. That is sensory input, right? You know that already. And your brain processes. What is that? Delicious food. Make sense? And brain will send signal to the salivary gland to secrete saliva into your mouth. Make sense? So that is motor going from the brain to the gland. Is it clear? But what kind of motor output is that? Voluntary or involuntary? Salivary. Involuntary, you know that, right? Involuntary, that means autonomy, clear? When you get scared, your heart starts to beat faster, right? Autonomy, going from the brain to the heart. See, scary thing, right? So your brain sends signal to the heart, motor output, right? To increase the heart rate. So those are the examples of what? What kind of motor? What kind of motor? Autonomic or somatic? Autonomic. Autonomic. Involuntary. Is it clear? Okay. Now, if you see a lion, okay, well, don't come here, but if you suddenly see a lion, you know, uh, what you will do? You will run away, right? You will run away. Or you will hide. Now, where you will hide, that's up to you. Make sense? You can hide behind, behind your car or behind a tree. That's up to you, right? So that is voluntary or involuntary? Voluntary. Voluntary, right? You are deciding and telling your muscle to move, right? So that running away. So two things are happening here, you see. When you see a lion, immediately what happens? Heart rate increases, increases right? So that is involuntary, autonomy. Make sense? But then you decide, you will run away, right? Which direction or which way, you, you, uh, by, by contracting the muscle, right? Using your muscle, you run away. That is involuntary, right? You will decide. So the signal going from the brain to the muscle, in that case, that is <coughs> voluntary, somatic. So both are happening, you see. from the salivary gland or you know increasing the heart rate right those are involuntary autonomic running away that is voluntary right now autonomy has two divisions sympathetic and para Sympathetic autonomy and parasympathetic autonomy. <coughs> uh, sympathetic.
peripatetic activation uh, is uh, like, you know, the example, best example is fight or flight response. Have you heard that? Mm -hmm. So, you know, uh, when you get scared, the response of your body is sympathetic. <clears throat> and when you are relaxing in very comfortable, you know, watching TV, uh, you know, beautiful golf course, right? Uh, not Tiger Woods. Uh, see, see, you know, uh, beautiful golf course, right? Uh, your body relaxes, right? Your heart rate goes down, your blood pressure goes down, right? When you are relaxed, so that is parasympathetic. Sympathetic activation is opposite, increases the heart rate, right? If you get scared, you are watching a scared movie, right? Uh, your adrenaline is released in the body, and that increases the sympathetic activation. Make sense? So adrenaline and sympathetic, they are very closely connected, okay? So increase adrenaline will increase sympathetic activation. Increase heart rate, blood pressure, okay? Muscle tone. Okay, so that's how we divide the nervous system. So in this picture, you see, brain and spinal cord belongs to what? Central nervous system, right? and the nerves belong to peripheral nervous system. So CNS, brain and spinal cord, PNS, nerves, right? <coughs> now, nerves could be how many types? Two. Two types, right? You see, sensory towards the brain and more on away, okay? So by blue lines, they have shown sensory taking the signal towards the central nervous system and more on by red lines, taking the signal out from the central nervous system. Make sense? Now model could be what? Voluntary and involuntary, involuntary right? So when the signal goes from the brain to the heart to increase the heart rate, that is involuntary, involuntary or involuntary? involuntary? Involuntary, right? Autonomic, right? And when brain sends signal to the muscle, you move the hand away voluntarily, that is, right? The motor output usually goes to the muscles and glands of your body in most of the cases. <clears throat> now, the cells in the nervous tissue or nervous system, two types of cells are found in the neural tissue or nervous tissue. Neurons are the main cells, and neuroglial cells are the supporting cells. Is it clear? So two types of cells. The main cells are what? Neurons. Neurons. And supporting cells are neuroglial cells. Is it clear? Okay. <coughs> there are many different types of neurons and different types of neuroglial cells, but these are first two types. Now. Your neurons are extremely sensitive cells, very delicate, okay? And production of electrical signal is the function. If I ask you in one sentence, what is the function of a neuron? Generation of electrical signal, is it clear? And after the electrical signal is produced in the neuron, you remember neuron has axon dendrites, the processes. So those processes carry the signal, transmits the signal. So two functions, production and transmission of what kind of signal? Electrical, electrical signal. So production or generation and transmission of electrical signal are the functions of your neuron. Now, neuroglial cells. Neuroglial cells uh, perform a number of important functions. Uh, in recent studies uh, have found that neuroglial cells are also very important. They are supporting cells, but they perform 
some important functions. These are the important functions uh, performed by the neural glial cells. Neural glial cells can migrate or move from one place to another inside your brain. And neural glial cells move towards the injured neurons. That means if any injury occurs in your brain, glial cells will go there to do what? To do phagocytosis, engulf the dead cells or debris. Or if there is any microorganism, they will be engulfed by the neuroglial cell. <coughs> Some neuroglial cells guide migration of young neurons. When a new neuron is produced, where that new neuron will go, to which direction, you just think this way, when your brain is formed, right, from a small tissue mass, right, multiplication occurs, right, gets bigger, all body organs are like this, right, from a small few cells, multiplication then goes, right, so your brain has many different parts, you know that, performing different factors, right, so when the cells are being produced, Someone has to tell the cells that you go there, right? And make that part of the brain. You go to that direction, right? And make that structure of the brain, make sense? There must be some direction. So there are some neuroglial cells, they direct or guide the migration of young cells or neurons. Control the chemical environment. Some neuroglial cells can produce and release neurochemicals, neurochemicals, to maintain the level of, maintain the concentration of neurochemicals in the brain. If somewhere the amount goes down, down regulation occurs, that will Insulation, another very important function of neuroglial cells. Neuroglial cells cover the nerve fibers or neurons. So you know that the function of neuron is transmitting, right? Electrical signal. And insulation is important to reduce the loss of electricity when it travels, number one. Number two, enhancing the speed of transmission. You know, in your house, the electrical wires are insulated, right? Covered, insulated. So, exactly same way, your neurons transmit electrical signals, so the neurons are covered by insulation, insulated, right? Has covering. Now, who gives that covering? Some neuroglial cells. Very clear? So now, why insulation is important? To prevent the loss of electricity while it travels. And also make it, ensures that it uh, travels fast. So, what are the common neuroglial cells? There are many types of neuroglial cells, as I have mentioned. These are few common types of neuroglial cells in your brain. Astrocytes, microglia, ependymal cells, oligodendrocytes, satellite cells, and swan cells. So these are few common type of neuroglial cells. You have to remember these names. We'll quickly go over this. Just one or two things I'll mention. You have to remember that. Not too many, like one or two important things about each type, and you have to remember. First, astrocytes. Astro. Astro indicates what? Astronomy. Stars. stars. Very good. So the cells are star shaped. That's why astro, right? Sight means cell. So star shaped cells. You will see on November 9th, you will see the stars. Okay. Two telescopes. Okay. So the shape is star shaped. Okay. And the function of astrocytes. Very interesting function, you know, in 
inside the brain, okay, draw the brain again. Inside the brain, you have the capillaries, okay? And <coughs> astrocytes do what? Sends processes to the capillary and forms a layer around the capillary, like this. So, sends footstep like processes to the capillary and covers the capillary like this. See here, the process, this is astrocyte, sending process and that covers the capillaries in the brain. And that is very important because, let me see one capillary here, this is the capillary, you have blood here, right? Capillary wall, there are tiny holes everywhere in the body. Now, the capillaries in your brain should be covered because this is an extra layer that prevents toxic chemicals to get out from the capillary because your brain tissue is extremely sensitive, right? I mentioned it before. So, that is an extra layer given by the astrocytes around the capillaries of the brain. On the right. So, the toxic chemicals cannot get out easily from the blood and cannot enter into the brain tissue. Is it clear? Only oxygen and nutrients, right? Glucose will get out, but other chemicals cannot. Just to ensure, right, that toxic chemicals does not enter into the brain tissue. Is it clear? So that extra layer only found in the brain capillaries given by the astrocytes. And that is called the blood brain barrier. Brain barrier. It makes sense. The barrier between the blood and the brain tissue here. Outside. Okay? Blood brain barrier. So that is the function of astrocytes. You see here, this is the astrocyte processes covering the capillary of the brain. Okay? Covering around the capillary. Microglial cells. Microglial cells are like macrophages. You know macrophages do what? And go. Remember that? Phagocytosis. So, Microglial cells are macrophage like cells that can engulf the microorganisms or dead cells. So, cleaning the area. Okay? That's why you see microglial cells have multiple processes that help to engulf. Ependymal cells. Inside your brain, you have fluid filled cavities. Those are called ventricles. So let me show here. This is the brain. Inside the brain, this is a cavity here. This is called ventricle. Okay? Filled with what? Fluid. Called cerebrospinal fluid. Ventricles are fluid filled cavities inside the brain. Now, in the wall of the ventricle, you have one type of neuroglial cell. Like this is the wall of the ventricle, and these are the neuroglial cells. Okay? And these neuroglial cells have cilia, like this. See? They are like soft, they are like structured cilia. So, like this. And these neuroglial cells, those are attached to the wall of the ventricles, are called ependymal cells. Ependymal cells. Make sense? So, lining the walls of the ventricles. And they have what? Cilia. So, now you can think that by the movement of the cilia, these cells help to move the fluid. Make sense? 
because inside the ventricle you have fluid. So the cilia moves, the cilia move, and that moves the fluid. If the fluid doesn't move, if the fluid stays there year after year, right, that will, the fluid will get bad. So you need to move the fluid and the fluid will get out, new fluid will be secreted there. Is that clear? So new fluid is being continuously secreted and old fluid is being pushed out. Is that clear? So that movement is important. Okay. Uh, now we we'll see the insulation covering. You know that neurons transmit electrical signal, right? So insulation is important. I have mentioned already, right? Insulation is important. And some neuroglial cells give insulation. You see here, how beautiful. Uh, this is the neuron, the process, and a number of layers formed by this neuroglial cell. This neuroglial cell is called oligodendrocyte. Oligo dendrocyte. And this is the cell body of oligodendrocyte. And these are the processes. And processes wrap the nerve fibers. Make sense? Like this. Around the nerve fibers. Or axons. So you see the oligodendrocytes provide insulation. Where this is important to know <coughs> the nerve fibers in the central nervous system, that means in the brain and the spinal cord, not in peripheral nervous system. Oligodendrocytes provide insulation in the central nervous system. I thought that the binary sheep was formed from Schwann cells. Is that not Swan cells are uh, uh, forming uh, insulation in the peripheral nervous system. Okay. So we are talking about the central nervous system. Okay, so this is the peripheral nervous system. You see, the nerve fiber is covered by these cells, and these are the swan cells that you said, okay, in the peripheral nervous system or PNS. So, is it clear? So in CNS, who is making the insulation? Give us the insulation. Oligodendrocytes. And in peripheral nervous system, swan cells, okay? Around the fibers. But now let's see around the cell body in peripheral nervous system. Around the cell body of neurons in peripheral nervous system, another type of neuroglial cells give insulation. And those are called the satellite cells. So these are the satellite cells. You see the cells, neuroglial cells, around the cell body in the peripheral nervous system. So in peripheral nervous system, two types of neuroglial cells are here. Swan cells around the fibers and satellite cells around the cell body. So you see, these are three types of neuroglial cells. They are giving insulation. Okay. So those are uh, important neuroglial cells and their function, okay? Now, we'll talk about the main cells of your nervous system or neural tissue. Those are called the neurons, right? Neurons are very delicate, very sensitive. <coughs> that means, you know, if you bother them, they will quickly die. Is it clear? Very sensitive, highly sensitive. You know, sometime during surgery of the brain, you know, when you open the skull, even the, if you keep the neuron brain tissue open to air for a long time, the brain tissue starts to deteriorate, die. Make sense? So, highly sensitive. Now, uh, they die easily because they are very sensitive, but if you don't bother them, this is interesting, if you don't bother them, they can stay alive for 100 years or more. If you don't bother them, but if you bother them, they will quickly die. Is it clear? So, 
That's why your nervous system, brain and spinal cord is heavily protected, you know that. Right? Inside the vertebral column, inside the cranium, heavily protected. Now, uh, how you can keep the neurons alive for 100 years or more if you don't bother them, number one, right? And number two, they need continuous supply of oxygen and glucose, nutrient. Continuous supply of oxygen and what? Glucose. You all know that if you stop supplying, you know, glucose and oxygen to the brain, brain tissue will die very fast, right? If you block the artery here, right? Within minute, if you stop circulation of blood to the brain, one minute, the person will, you know, get unconscious or even may die. Because these arteries are taking oxygen and glucose to the brain. Is it clear? Now if I stop circulation to my hand for one minute, it's still, you know, the tissue is alive. So, continuous supply of oxygen and glucose is needed to keep the brain tissue or neurons alive. What kind of signal transmission? Electrical signal transmission, right? We know that. So, these are the properties of the neurons. Am I talking? The neurons usually don't multiply. I said what? Usually, don't multiply, okay? Uh, <clears throat> before, the doctors and neuroscientists, they used to believe that once the brain is matured, no multiplication of cells or neurons take place, okay? It's like done. No more multiplication of brain cells Okay, but over the last 50 years, the scientists have found that small number of stem cells are present in the brain tissue too, okay? So that means what? New cells can be produced in the brain, is it clear? Not like other types of tissues in your body, you know, epithelial tissue, right? Quickly regenerates, but brain tissue does not, but small amount of stem cells are present, so some new cells can be produced in the brain too. Usually a mitotic, absence of mitosis, cell division. Okay, parts of a neuron. If you see the structure of a typical neuron, I said typical, that means most of the neurons <coughs> are like this. It has a cell body, short multiple processes, and they have branches, these are called dendrites, and a long single process that is called what? Axon. So this is the cell body. These are short multiple processes, and they have branching. These are called dendrites. and a single long process, that is the axon, okay? Now, <coughs> if you see the cytoplasm of the cell body, you'll see dark granules. These are called missile bodies or missile granules, okay? These are highly concentrated endoplasmic reticula, or ER. ID, concentrated and in peripheral nervous system that myelin sheet is given by the swan cells. So this is a neuron from peripheral nervous system. 
So we have that swan cells. Swan cells, okay, violent shape or insulation, okay. And uh, another thing is the end of the axon is called axon terminal. Axon. terminal and uh, uh, at the end of the axon terminal you have buttocks. Now you see here the swan cells 